This video is to ensure I never have a future in sports journalism. Rossi Posse Packer Nation! Welcome to another episode of Packcast, the podcast where you're not to be a Packers fan, but it sure does help. I'm your host, Tom Grassi, and today, you know, we're going to skip the formalities. We're going to skip all the niceness and the, the joy and optimism that we bring, because today is a special episode that I was actually going to make last year, or earlier this year. Uh, when we were going through the entire process of hiring Matt LaFleur and there was a conversation on which coach was going to get the job and there was lots of speculative articles and then some articles that just contained false information and knowingly false information. And I, I wanted to do it back then because the problem is, is I have fans that reach out to me Sometimes at 1.30 in the morning, sending me articles of, oh, did you hear that this happened to this player? Or, you know, they're looking to hire this coach or this person's getting released. And it's based off of complete nonsense and BS and it doesn't actually exist. And I've seen more and more of that. And I've obviously done this show. This is my fifth season starting in August and my third on YouTube. And it's just gotten progressively worse and it popped its head up again, even more so, with the Aaron Rodgers and Matt LaFleur debacle that occurred this week. And it's gotten to the point where I, I just feel I need to get this out because it's getting to the point where not only am I getting very frustrated and very angry, but it's gotten to the point where I find that a per- me being me, a nobody, and I know that I am a nobody in this business, in this industry, in this whatever the hell you want to call it, media world, and why the hell do I have more journalistic integrity than the people who are making ridiculous amounts of money or the people who are just getting a paycheck for this thing and are not relying off ad revenue on YouTube? And and that's what I think is bothering me the very most. So let's let's do this video today. Uh, which I titled Everything Wrong with the NFL Media. Not to be confused with NFL Media, which is like its own separate company. That's that's something else. Uh, but I want to talk about two particular things, and then we'll get into we'll get into like a little epilogue. Uh, but the first thing, and this has been around for a long, long time, and I'm actually not as pissed off about this as one peop- one one person may think, and that's clickbait, right? And you know what clickbait is. I, I don't need to go into a definition of clickbait. Right, you see it every single day, whether it's an attractive person in the thumbnail or it's something in like big bold letters, or you even see this on YouTube, right? Like in the thumbnails, it's like 15 things you missed in the latest Spider Man trailer, and there's a big red circle around nothing just so you click on it, or there's like an enticing title of Aaron Rodgers gets into a fight with a koala who wins, that kind of stuff. And uh, it's not a new problem. It drives clicks, it drives ad revenue, right? And I I have to say, it's annoying, but I get it. I completely and totally get it. And as someone who has struggled to build something over these past few years, I 100% have been guilty in like putting stupid ass titles on something. And and I I drastically tried to reduce the amount that I do that. But, but I get it. It's an incredibly competitive realm. It's, an incre- it's a competitive market, and you're looking to just stand out because everybody and their mother has a podcast or a show or a, a, an article or a blog or what have you, so something to stand out. And I can forgive clickbait when it's actually good or quality and accurate content below the headline that may or may not be clickbait or inside the the thumbnail. I can forgive that if the stuff is actually correct. If it's not just speculative garbage that is being passed off as fact. That's what bothers me. If you want to go and have a blog or a show or do something out of your basement, right? And you want it to be an opinion piece and you make that very clear, you can speculate until the cows come home. I really don't care. I am not the journalistic police. But when you start passing off assumptions and implications or inferring things and passing it off as fact, 
That's when I have a serious problem, leading to the second thing, which is just flat-out false reporting or these assumption articles that I see. And now, I know that this is a very heavy slash like triggering phrase of like fake news and I don't like to use that phrase because I find that that has almost turned into a way to just shut down any journalist that you disagree with and that's not what I'm going for because there are plenty of great journalists out there there are plenty of great news organizations out there that don't resort to what I'm about to talk about and I'm not grouping them in this category. The people I'm talking about know who I'm, you, you know I'm talking about you. And if you have something to say about it and you have a problem with me pointing it out, again, someone in their basement shouldn't be doing a better job than you. So with that being said, because we're going we're gonna to name some names here. All right, so the first time that I, I, I really in, encountered this to a point where <laughs> it actually bothered me was when we were going through the Matt LaFleur hiring fiasco, in which I put out a number of videos breaking down a bunch of potential candidates. We looked at Josh McDaniels. We looked at Pat Fitzgerald. We, we looked at a number of different candidates. And during this time, there was a little, like, uh, like a blurb. And I mean, it was that big from Ian Rappaport on NFL.com. That said that Pat's fit, Pat Fitzgerald was getting targeted by the Packers to be interviewed, and Josh McDaniels was also named in that little blurb. And that's all it said. It didn't say that they were front runners. It didn't say that the Packers were closing in on somebody. It just said that they were targeting these two fellows, fellows, <laughs> these two fellows, these fellows, to get interviewed, right? That night... As soon as that little blurb comes out, I get a DM at 1.30 in the morning saying, we are going to hire either Pat Fitzgerald or Josh McDaniels. And I responded to the fan, where did you see this? They send me this article saying that the two front runners are Josh McDaniels and Pat Fitzgerald. And its sourcing is the Ian Rappaport blurb. There is no new information in this article. There is no substance behind it. And it's just saying that these two are front runner. And I had a little tiff between this particular writer on Twitter saying that you're just not reporting correctly. Like there's nothing that Ian Rappaport said that could lead you to that conclusion that those two are the front runners. Sure, they were named, but that doesn't mean that they're shoe wins for the job. And obviously, because Matt LaFleur got hired. And his response was, if you can't make that assumption that those two guys are the front runners, then I don't know what I can do for you. And so it's that kind of attitude. It's that kind of tone. It's that kind of a just blah that you can take that and just write something that is factually incorrect and is factually wrong and was proven wrong. And you don't have people going, oh, I take it back. I was wrong about my article. No, we double down. That kind of crap pisses me off to no end. And that is what I saw all this week about the Matt LaFleur and Aaron Rodgers fight, debate, struggle, whatever you want to call it, because a number of different articles called it a number of different things. So let's actually look at what actually happened, and then let's look at how the media interpreted that. Now, we have talked about this potential struggle between Matt LaFleur and Aaron Rodgers ever since Matt LaFleur got hired. Matt LaFleur is 39 years old. Aaron Rodgers is 35 years old. Aaron Rodgers basically had the key to the, the vehicle that was driving this offense. Literally, like, look at the run the table season. Did everything, right? Got very stagnant. McCarthy didn't help him out. What have you? Gone. Matt LaFleur comes in, different offense. Nathaniel Hackett comes in, different offense, different play style, different scheme, etc. How is Aaron Rodgers going to be coached? How is he going to fit into this new scheme, etc.? So, uh, Michael Silver, who I have no problem with, came out, right, with this thing on NFL.com and quoted, while Rodgers was chuckling, by the way, and says, I don't think you want to see me uh, turn off 11 years of recognizing defenses, right? 
That's all he said. While chuckling, like, <laughs> you know, having a great time. And people took that and ran with it. And if you don't believe me, look at all of these articles that came out about it. Of Iron Rodgers is unhappy. He's not going to be able to audible in this system. Oh, there's a showdown coming between him and Matt LaFleur. There's uh, there's this the troubles brewing in Green Bay, right? Can Rodgers be coach? People, I, Rodgers is going to flat out ignore LaFleur. Meanwhile, Matt LaFleur last week quoted about Aaron Rodgers. He's played the game at a certain with a certain style for his whole career, and he's done it at a pretty high level. We never want to take away that playmaker, that playmaking away from him. But that doesn't get written about. That doesn't get written about at all. And in every single one of these freaking fracking articles, and by the way, in the silver article too, Rodgers even went on and said how he's praising this scheme of how it's really going to stretch defenses. They're really going to have to pay attention. There's so many different uh, movements and motions that are involved with it, and he really likes that, and it's going to take a little bit for him to learn. But people have interpreted that and crapped it out with nothing that is based in reality. Nothing. And they're presenting it as fact. That's what I have a problem with. If you want to have a show like this, right, where I am very upfront and said, this is my opinion on something, right, that is fine. I have no problem with that whatsoever. But when you're basically saying, look at what Aaron Rodgers said, that means that he hates Matt LaFleur, or this means that he's not going to listen to Matt LaFleur, or this means that he's not going to do well in the offense, or Matt LaFleur is going to get fired, what have you. It's, it's irresponsible. It's not what it should be. In, it's not journalistic integrity. It's none of that crap. And I just don't understand. Well, I do understand. It gets me very frustrated that grown men and women can pump out complete and total lies. And there's no, there's nothing. They're, they're, and people eat it up. And then they contact myself or other people or they share it around and go, oh, look, look at all this. And I know you're, you're hearing this regardless of what political side you're on and you're like, oh, man, this sounds like oh, fake news, you know. <laughs> and again, I don't like that term because I'm not saying it's all journalists. But I'm saying that we are currently in an environment that promotes this kind of crap to getting out. It's all about driving clicks. It's all about that. And there, there's no repercussions for it. And what the third and final point I want to, to bring up is that we are responsible for it, in part, in that we live in an age where the demand for this kind of content, or content in general, is so high, and we have such ADD, and we just go through things nonstop, whether it's binging TV shows, or binging YouTube content, or blogs or articles or what have you, that there's such this drive for content, we read it, we think about it for a half a second, and then we throw it away and move it on to the next thing, that media itself has had to adapt to this demand because th they need to make money. And so it's like that scene in Anchorman, right, where they cut to the, the car chase, right, and they make up things of what's go like happening in that. That's essentially what media has become. And it's gotten to a point where people – and I mean people need to demand better. That's, I think, the only way, if this can change, not to be a nihilist, but if it can change, the only way it's going to change is if people demand better content, you demand better from the journalists, the reporters, the people sitting in their basement. You demand better from them. Because if you don't, this kind of crap is going to continue nonstop. And so if you are unable to, if we're not able to, to stop the, the ginormous media machine, then I do ask you as an educated person to go and if you see an article and there is no sourcing whatsoever, or if there is sourcing and you double check that source to see if this person is just pulling something out of their ass, I implore you to do the tiniest bit of research. And I know it takes more time and I know you should just be able to rely on these people to give you information that is accurate and that is honest. And, and I try to do that to the very best of my ability here. I'm very upfront when I say this is my opinion.
right? Look at the, the video I released on Monday, why the Packers won't make the playoffs, right? I preface the entire thing, right, of like these are the challenges that they could face that not make the playoffs, right? And the same thing with Tuesday, why they could make the playoffs, right? That's speculative. Like I'm, I'm going based off of things that may happen, but I'm very upfront about that. And so what I, I think needs to happen in, in, in a perfect society, which is not going to happen, I, I think we just need to hold some people accountable. And if you see this kind of crap, call them out on it. Because that's the only way that things get better. You see a guy, right, like like Colin Cowherd, right, or any of the, the, the major talking heads that make a lot of money by Skip Bayless, like coming up with like these hot takes, right, of Aaron Rodgers – you know, is, uh, you know, is worse than Nathan Peterman, which, you know, Nathan Peterman's the greatest of all time. So I understand where he's going with that. But the, this kind of just like hot take, like, let me give you a terrible take and, and you'll read and you'll look at it and you'll be like, oh, this is so terrible. But the problem is that people click on that and people watch that. And I don't blame them for it because sometimes, you know, you're not there for the information. Sometimes you're just there for the entertainment. And I get that. But the problem is, is when journalists, reporters, whatever the hell you want to call them at this point, when they put out stuff that is factually wrong, in my opinion, that is irresponsible, and a guy in his basement shouldn't be doing a better job than you. That's my opinion on it. So I felt like I needed to get this out. I implore you for whenever you see an article and before you get all mad, or before you get all upset, look at the sources. And if the sources check out and they're doing their job as reporters, great, excellent. You know, tell them good job. And if they're not, tell them to do better because you deserve better. That, that's, all, that's all it is. We deserve better, right? Once we, we might not be able to stop it all, but we deserve better as consumers, people who are consuming this content. And I know free market, you know, and supply and demand, and we, there is a major, major demand out there for this kind of content. I think we should demand better too, but that's just my opinion, but at least I'm letting you know about it. Let me know what you think down in the comments below. You can find me at Tom Grassy Comedy at all the social medias that you see. Check out Packcast or don't. Either way, I'm going to go relax for the weekend. Have a great weekend. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Tom Grassy, and as always, go Pack Go. Mm-hmm.